there is almost nothing Democrats and Republicans can agree on. They can't agree on stimulus. They can barely agree on who won the election. Um, certainly not on how to fight COVID. But there is one thing it seems both sides do agree on. They're all mad at Facebook. And today, a big news. The U.S. government, plus attorneys general from 46 states, Washington, D.C., and Guam, have all filed suit against Facebook. Uh, they've accused Facebook of, quote, years-long abuse of monopoly power. Letitia James, who's the New York attorney general and is leading, says, instead of competing on the merits, Facebook used its power to suppress competition so it could take advantage of users and make billions by converting personal data into a cash cow. Among the penalties, they're requesting that a court force Facebook to sell off, to break itself up and sell off Instagram, it owns Instagram, and WhatsApp. This has been a long time coming and it will take a very long time for any of this to resolve, but it is now big news. And to help unpack it and figure out um, what this is all about and what, where we might go from here, I'm joined by a really special guest, Lori Siegel. She's the founder of Dot 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 Media. Uh, she is uh, involved in a the 60 Minutes um, project, and she's a longtime tech correspondent for CNN, where you've seen her interview Mark Zuckerberg. Um, she has interviewed the WhatsApp and knows many of these players and these issues incredibly well. Hi. Thanks for being here on such short notice. It's so good to be here. So uh, first of all, Lori, this has been a long time coming but it must be still sort of sending shockwaves to the tech community. Yeah, I feel like everybody knew this was coming. This has been the thing folks are talking about for so long and you hear the rumblings of it and there's been antitrust lawsuits here and there. But I, I think today is a, a, a pretty big deal. And I think there are questions about what will happen after the Trump administration. Um, does this have legs? I think this does have legs. And what will this actually mean? Uh, will we see Facebook broken up? Um, and what will a Facebook look like? What could it look like without Instagram or WhatsApp? And would that actually happen? I mean, I think that's a, a really big question. I put on my skeptical um, you know, tech reporting hat and say, could they actually do that? Would that actually happen? Facebook has lots of resources. Uh, they would. This would be the fight, knowing Mark Zuckerberg a little bit, this will be the fight of his life um, to make sure that this does not happen to the company. So let's take it one step at a time. Um, would you sort of set the scene, explain to us why it is that so many um, law enforcement agencies and uh, attorneys general have combined forces against Facebook? Sure. So I think, you know, I feel like story tell a little bit, but you almost have to go back to when Facebook was going public. And um, it was, I, I believe it was in around 2012 and Facebook was going public and there was this app that was not so, so well known at the time called Instagram, had 13 employees, no revenue, um, wasn't, you know, there were lots of other photo sharing apps and right before Facebook went public and this is when you're not supposed to buy apps, uh, you're supposed to be in your quiet period, they ended up buying Instagram. Uh, and a lot of people scratched their heads and said, well, why did they do that? Uh, and at the time, it was because Mark Zuckerberg had the foresight to know that, you know, Facebook wasn't doing so hot in their mobile strategy. Uh, and if you think about it, Facebook at the time was something we looked at on our computers. It wasn't something we looked at on our mobile phones. But Instagram was a mobile first app. And so Mark Zuckerberg at the time thought, well, you know, this if we don't end up buying something like this, it could be competition. Right. And so that's kind of planting the seed around, I think, what if you go all the way back to that period, what we're beginning to talk about now. Well, fast forward all these years later and then you have two years later, they ended up buying WhatsApp for twenty two billion dollars. So if you look at back, we were all scratching our heads. I remember as a startup reporter being like, oh, wow, they bought it for a billion dollars. That's insane. Two years later, they bought WhatsApp for uh, 19 billion dollars. Um, but it ended up that these purchases, this shopping spree that Facebook went on was incredibly influential because Facebook became even more powerful because these companies, Instagram and WhatsApp, that were a part of Facebook, grew exponentially. You know, they became, Instagram arguably became, you know, one of the most powerful social networks and it was now owned by Facebook. So the questions are, you know, started swirling, is this a monopoly? Does Facebook have too much power? And did it 
did it prevent other companies from competing? Did it prevent other startups from being able to play in this, this um, you know, this place? And, and so I think th that's kind of at the heart of this. And then after all of these issues that Facebook has faced, and I think there's a lot of anger towards Facebook over data and privacy, the election, you know, is there bias? So it's all of this. And then you have, I think, now really people paying attention in a way that they weren't before and looking and seeing, you know, does Facebook simply have too much power? And when you look at it, you can go back to some of those purchases and say, well, now these companies are enormous. They're under Facebook. And is it simply too powerful? And do they prevent other, uh, another ecosystem from flourishing? And the argument I hear on that front is, well, obviously they do, because when an upstart gets enough power, Facebook buys it. Yes. So, I mean, that's exactly right. I remember there was a certain amount of time when I was uh, reporting specifically on startups where it was like, well, you hear from a lot of, I call up a lot of startup founders and it was like, well, don't, you don't want to really do this because Facebook can do that, but better, or Facebook will crush you or well, Facebook will buy you, you know, and that was kind of, you don't want to compete with Facebook. And so I think we're beginning to hear about that now in a different way. Are there other anti-competitive practices of which they're accused? I mean, they're uh, quite a bit. I mean, I think they're looking at, I, I have to look through a lot of the, um, you know, I, I have to look at, I think it's penalties. Uh, looking at it, it's, um, you know, what the FTC is saying. Uh, they want prior notice and approval for all future acquisitions. They have quite a bit um, that they want. I mean, this is pretty, I would say this is pretty severe in, in what they're asking. I mean, this is not, I, I can tell you um, for a fact that when Facebook's, lawyers got this today. This wasn't, uh, this wasn't an easy day. You know, this was definitely a, this is something we have to take seriously, not, you know, this is going to be a fight. Um, I think this was definitely something um, that was more severe than, than lawsuits they've had in the past. So what do you think their pushback will be? You know, I think their pushback will be, I think there will be uh, they will, as I said, kind of at the beginning of this, I think it'll be, you know, this is the fight. This will be, um, they will 100% fight this. But I think their pushback will be, um, you know, they're too integrated now. It'll be too hard to break up these companies. And if you look, and if you read between the lines, base, I think it was back in 2019, they started integrating a lot of these services, um, you know, between Instagram DM and Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp, they started integrating these services in a way that they hadn't done before. And they'll say that this is for protection too and making everything easier for election integrity um, and for, you know, child predators and all sorts of stuff to have things in one infrastructure, which is, you know, it's a fair argument to be able, this is a behemoth of a company to try to take everything uh, into account. So I think that will be an argument. And also, you know, you look at China and you don't want to, uh, you want to be competitive against China. They're going to have all sorts of arguments, I think, in this vein. Um, but it is interesting if you look at those moves that they've made. So if you want to get a little bit inside baseball and in the tech space, um, the founders of WhatsApp. So what happened when Facebook acquired WhatsApp and what happened when Facebook acquired Instagram is both of these founders weren't sure they wanted to, to sell to Facebook. Um, and Mark Zuckerberg said something very specifically, which is, I will leave you guys alone and almost let your companies operate completely separate from Facebook, right? If when, when we purchase you, well, you have to look, notice none of those founders are at Facebook or at, are, are at the company more. They've all left in the last couple of years. The founders of Instagram have left. The founders of WhatsApp have all left. And Facebook is more integrated into Instagram. So if you look and you see there's more kind of shopping experiences, there's different types of experiences on Instagram, and it's more Facebook. Uh, you can, yes, you can but see not how. well integrated. As somebody who's right. all day long on Instagram, I can say <laughs> these two things are not well integrated. It is such a challenge navigating between them. But yeah. Right. Oh so it's, it's really specific, but they have really tried, you know, integrated and some of those original founders are out. So that's kind of your inside baseball right. look at like kind of why that's happened. And so I think they will fight and say that, you know, for safety and protection and data and all this, you know, we are more integrated now and for election integrity and all that type of stuff. I think you will hear those arguments and I think you will see them go on a, um, you know, speak out more. And in the time that I covered Facebook, they started 
speaking out more than they used to going on the offense i would say well we've certainly seen in the last few years that they've been much more public and trying to do the listening tours and testify before congress yeah. cooperatively and all that but um i mean i can tell you from just the audience response when i posted this generally i asked what are your questions and people responded with can you promise this will happen please like <laughs> There is such an appetite for change, even among people who are on Instagram all day, rely on these services, love them. There's this sense that something's wrong. So can you speak to a little bit of what the, what the larger problem is? Does Facebook effectively own information? Do they own our distribution means? And have they somehow kind of, you know, taken over from the media the ability to reach people? Yeah, I think we were at a very specific moment um, where I, I understand that there's a lot of anger and there's a lot of distrust, right? Like, if you look over the last couple years, um, there's been a lot of anger directed at Facebook for not being able to, to get control of disinformation spreading on the platform, of election integrity, um, you know, it's of our own data. I mean, I interviewed Zuckerberg during Cambridge Analytica, right? And I remember that was the moment when I sat across from Mark Zuckerberg and said, what went wrong, you know, and I remember looking at him and thinking, you know, this was kind of the moment that all of us, not just the inside baseball tech world, but everybody was collectively pissed off yeah. about what was happening to our data. And I think maybe what's happened is people have a more of an understanding uh, over what's happening or more of an understanding of how little they know over what's happening. And I think you have um, more popular culture beginning to talk about it, like the social dilemma, right, on Netflix, where, you know, folks are beginning to raise red flags, but people have been raising the red flags for a long time. But I think we're beginning to have, I think, more of a dialogue about it. And I think there is anger that if you wanted to take control back in some capacity, what are you gonna do? You can't get off of, um, you can't get off of Instagram or you can't delete Facebook and Instagram because they are such a big part of our lives yeah. and they are so deeply personal and compliments to Facebook and Instagram and all these companies, but they are so deeply a part of our lives. But at the same time, these products that were made in Silicon Valley have impacted our democracy. They've impacted our mental health. They've impacted our well-being, our relationships, and they've shaped culture and society in ways that are both good, but also bad. And I don't think that our tech founders have done the best job of getting on top of that. And I think there's a lot of anger and people are fed up, especially right now in the pandemic, where we're all relying on this. humanity through this lens of technology. Has the government successfully played police person in the internet landscape before? I mean, I think the government has had a lot of issues. Um, <laughs> I want to say this delicately, but I think that the government has struggled with this thing called the internet. Um, and I think that um, this is very difficult. I remember going and being in the, it was when Zuckerberg testified for the first time in Congress. And I remember um, one of the senators saying, you know, to Facebook, this is about potential regulation and saying that to Zuckerberg, how do you make money? And he said, Senator, like, we sell ads. And it was just like, no, it was, oh my I goodness, like how are we gonna have these folks regulate when they don't 100% have the understanding, but in all fairness, it's really hard to understand these things when they don't exactly make it transparent. You know, and we seem to learn all these, these big scary things all the time. And so I think the government, I think we need more, and there used to be, especially in Silicon Valley, so much tension between Silicon Valley and Washington. And it was always looked in Silicon Valley, it was always looking at Washington as slow and bureaucratic and you know, we just don't even need to bother. And now that's changed completely because Silicon Valley realizes they have to play nice with the government. And if anything, like, you know, you see, you see they've got to have lobbyists, they've got to have people inside, they've got to have people playing nice in ways that they never did before, I think, in, in the last decade. So I think we're going to have to see more integration, but we have to have people who understand the way, you know, the internet works a little bit better because the internet just moves. Yeah, I mean, to say the least, because the internet and what's happening, it's being, it's moving so far past how the law can regulate and, and I don't think there's a good understanding of it. And I think we see that and if we don't understand it, you can't regulate it the right ways. And, and I think the tech companies have shown that they cannot self-regulate at this point. So what you're suggesting is that 
this is going to probably be a long legal battle. We've seen yeah. legal battles like this before. We broke up the baby, the bells. We broke up yep. um, Standard Oil. Yep. Um, there was an antitrust suit against Microsoft. These things go on for years. Um, and whether it's successful or not, you're predicting that there will be separate regulation that has to come out of the agencies and or Congress that's separate and apart from this lawsuit. I, I think so. I think that's potentially what will happen. I mean, I think this lawsuit will be painful and long. These all say this will be painful and long and there'll be lots of money and lawyering and lots of headlines. Good day out of for it. the lawyers. You know, it'll be a big payday for the lawyers. There'll be some press around it. You'll see Facebook come out and, and say their piece. You know, we're gonna we're gonna see a lot happen over the next couple of years. I think the thing to watch um, will be how what will happen with the Biden administration, right? I see one of the comments is Elizabeth Warren has been saying this for some time. You know, I know you know, Facebook is, I think, I mean, is it possible for Facebook to figure out the Trump administration? I don't know. But has anyone 100 percent figured out, you know, some of these administrations? But I think it'll be interesting for to see how big tech fares in a Biden administration. Right. Um, I think that'll be super interesting. Um, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure how it will fare. I, I hope that there is a better conversation around these issues. Um, but, you know, I, I've seen complaints on both sides. You have President Trump complaining about tech power. You've had Biden's, you know, uh, incoming administration complaining about also. tech power. So they're not getting a free pass. Like, I think the one thing I will say is the landscape of technology will fundamentally change. Do I think things will be broken up? Do I think WhatsApp and Instagram uh, will be broken off from Facebook. I'm not, as as someone who covered technology, and, and those were some of the biggest stories I covered early in my career, I just like, I almost, I can't imagine. Uh, mm. But wow, what a, what a fascinating moment in time we're in. Um, you know, but, but I, I will say Zuckerberg had some foresight at the time to buy um, to, to purchase sure. these companies, you know, and, and at the time, and this is where we say, the FTC, they didn't see these as, as these valuable companies, right? But they didn't they just, understand, as you say, there was no in incumbent knowledge there. I mean, yeah. this is one of the frequent critiques is that the tech world is able to pay high salaries so they get the talent that understands yeah. how it works and government is left with people who aren't as often up to speed on what's changing and evolving. Um, yeah. One of the, one thing I do want to say, because I see comments, is that the FTC is an independent agency. So when there's a transfer of power, the suit continues. You, yep. A new administration may or may not yep. be as much heft behind it, but there's little reason yep. to believe a Biden administration would, would back away necessarily from something like sure. that. Sure. Um, sure. And, and I think just in general, it'll be interesting to see how they handle... Uh, all the issues coming along with Section 230, with all of the, you know, with, with so many of the issues around technology that are coming up. I mean, you don't get me started on issues like QAnon and, and you know, moderation and all of these things, but I think there's less patience right now for big tech and some of the issues that they face because we, we've seen them now. And I think a new administration will have fresh eyes on it. On it. Um, this comes less than two months after the Justice Department in 11 states sued Google. So who do you think they might come after next? Amazon? <laughs> like, are there other names on the chopping block? Yeah, I, I mean, I could see them going after Amazon. I think there are lots of questions. Um, you know, I think there are lots of questions when it comes to Amazon. I think Google, it's interesting because I remember one thing that folks said to me after um, after Cambridge Analytica, because I covered Cambridge Analytica so closely in the data privacy scandal, right? For folks who, who don't know, it's, it was just this, uh, the data privacy scandal that had all of us wondering what's happening to our, our data on Facebook. I remember one thing a source said to me, which was like, God, the things that potentially Google has gotten away with that people aren't even talking about. So I don't, I don't think we're done with Google. I think it'll be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Google's path. Um, will be very interesting to see what happens. I think Amazon, super interesting as well. Uh, I, I think that's a company that, um, you know, especially now, post in the midst of a pandemic, is more powerful than ever, and that deserves some looking into to some degree. So, I, you know, I think that the payday for the 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 wild west of big tech is is over to, mm. to some degree. I, I think, you know, 
in the time I covered it, there were all these stages. The first stages were cool, these really cool companies. Then it was growing bigger, bigger, bigger. And then all of a sudden it was tech impact society. And now it's, oh my goodness, what have we done? <laughs> and how do we, how do we reel this in? And how do we make sure everything doesn't just go straight to hell to some degree? I want to ask you a couple audience questions. One is something you touched on. Someone asked, what do you think might happen to all the data Facebook sure. owns if they have to sell component pieces and break it off, break up Instagram and WhatsApp? I mean, it's a really interesting question. I, I mean, I think like this is the always the question with Facebook, what happens to our data, right? Like what what is happening to our data? I mean, I don't know if I could answer that question to, to be quite honest with you. I think Facebook right now owns the the data. I mean, it could go, you know, it could be separated in Instagram. I, you know, I don't have a specific answer yeah. for it. I, I don't want to speculate, but this is when it says like your data is their gold. I can imagine this is why they would fight so hard not to try to separate this. Um, what do you think is Congress's role in this? Do you think it should fall on Congress to rewrite laws and prevent these sorts of things in the future? You know, I do think Congress has to play a better role in this. But I truthfully, I think Congress has to have a better understanding of the way the internet works. And I do think that's a shared responsibility. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, it was a travesty, I will say, sitting at some of these hearings and listening to some of the questions being asked of tech founders. And, and watching them as they got away with certain, you know, being able to answer in certain ways. But then again, I have to say to myself, I covered technology for 10 years, over 10 years. Like, of course, I know they're getting away with this. How should these people 100% know to ask these things in certain ways? But I think Congress has a responsibility in doing the work and hiring the right people and filling the right seats, right, with people who are looking forward and technology is our future and technology is now shaping society and it's a part of democracy. And so if we're going to help rule for the next iteration of democracy, you've got to, I think, have people at the table who know how to regulate that and who speak that language fluently. Let me, I just want to do a quick moment on this. You mentioned section 230. This is something that President Trump has criticized and members of Congress have talked about rewriting. Can you, broadly explain what it is and what might change. It, right, it so I mean, sure. I mean, it's essentially, it's, it's essentially a rule of the internet that was written a long, long time ago that, said, that makes it so a lot of these internet companies, um, so it makes it so they're not liable for the content on their platforms, right? And this was written, I have to look at the specific date, but I believe it was in the 90s, right? So it was, it was a long time ago um, and it's out, in to a degree, it's outdated now, right? And so there's so many questions over, you know, does it give just blanket immunity to tech companies to get away with putting, you know, to having whatever they want on their platforms to some degree? Now, of course, there's some exceptions like um, child exploitation, that kind of content. Um, but it's been in the news quite a bit because a lot of folks have tried to overturn Section 230, but it's really the blanket protection of the internet, uh, of the internet. To, to some degree. And so I think we will see that challenged more and more. Um, and I think that's a fascinating one. I interviewed a woman in Texas who's trying to challenge it, who's kind of like a, you know, she's not a big, big time lawyer, but she's this very scrappy lawyer who's managed to continue to fight Facebook in court uh, over so cool. and over again. She was fascinating, you know, because, um, you know, it's this larger conversation about what we should, what these, what these companies should be liable for on their platform. And, and I think that's actually, you know, it's, it's being able to have this conversation now in 2020, knowing what we know about the internet now and knowing what we know can happen as opposed to like what happened back in the nineties, right? Because we've seen, you know, I think if we were to write the rules of the internet now, um, what, what would we write them as and who would be liable? And I think we also have to be, you know, I think we have to be very careful because it's easy to oversimplify these issues and it's easy to say, well, just Facebook should be liable for this or, you know, make them very black and white. But I, I think they're all very, very complicated and you have to be careful with what you wish for. But a lot of these rules do deserve, you know, revisiting in this era. The other thing that um, a big challenge a big project Facebook is taking on is something called Libra, where effectively mm -hmm. they want to create an alternate 
currency system, monetary system, I guess. I don't know. And do you think this lawsuit could put a crimp in those plans or adjust what regulators allow? You know, I think it's interesting. I think when they launched Libra, something else terrible was happening in the PR department for Facebook. I remember like they were getting sued or something big was happening right when they like announced Libra before. And I remember saying to folks at the company, I was like, really? <laughs> like this is, it was something along these lines of like Facebook's too powerful or something. And I'm like, now you're trying to do a universal currency or something like, you know, but I, I don't know, because here's what I'll say about Facebook. Um, every single time I think to myself, nope, this is it. The, you know, th this is the time that, that they can't do this thing because this is going to get in the way of it. I am proven wrong. You know, I, I really think, I think people underestimate over and over again how powerful mm. this company is. And, and I think we are seeing it. This is such a powerful company. Now, will that succeed? That's another, you know, like, will this get in the way of it? I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe the timing could get in the way here and there with some announcements. But I don't think that's ever stopped Mark. Uh, Mark is wildly ambitious. He is, I would say, one of the most um, ambitious founders I've ever met. Um, and, and I think he believes in Facebook. It's like in his blood. And I don't think he will be stopped in, in, to some degree. He lives and breathes. He's one of those lifetime founders. Like, there are founders of these companies that you meet that you're like, oh, well, you know, maybe, um, maybe they'll probably have another founder come in at some point and, and see the as when I can't even I just can't even envision the company without him. And I think that's how it's all been built. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't really see um, him giving up on some wild dreams to do something big um, because could, of that. Could Facebook's power be diminished simply because younger people are not adopting Facebook at the rate that people used to, and it'll just be natural attrition. And the truth is we do see these startups rise, come to dominance, and then the incumbents fail within 10 to 12 years and something else overtakes them. Yes, 100%. And this is, and this is why, if you think about the future of Facebook, when you think about the future of Facebook in 10 years, Facebook might not even look like Facebook. Like, this is why Mark, you know, was smart when he invested in WhatsApp and Instagram. And if you think about um, when he's thinking about the future of Facebook, he's thinking about augmented reality and virtual reality. And so do I think in 10, 15 years, Facebook isn't going to be this thing we look at on our, on an app on our phone or, you know, uh, as a Facebook page, if they want to succeed, they will be something completely different. But yes, you know, I think, um, God, what is it? When you go to Facebook's campus in Menlo Park on the back of the sign, it's the sun microsystems it's like because it hasn't been painted over so you have this big thumbs up for facebook but on the back of it it's the sun microsystems um sign because they didn't paint over it and it's this reminder that if you don't innovate quicker uh, quick and if you don't go 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 that you too could remain like no matter how powerful you are i think it's like this reminder that you could be um, forgotten. And so we've seen this happen before, but I think that's why to some degree, um, you know, and it's been reported that Mark called this FTC fight or this fight, um, to make sure that the company is not broken up existential. And I think he's Are you there? That's okay. Had a call it's from my mom. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm I see you on Instagram. <laughs> That's Sorry, good. Mom, I'm live on oh, Well, Instagram. that's a good place to stop anyway, but I want to ask, yeah. where do people follow you? Tell us, like, where they follow you on Instagram. Yeah. Well, I'm on Instagram, as long as Instagram's under Facebook, but no matter what, I'll be on Instagram. Um, right. It's at Lori Siegel, um, and then I'm also on uh, Twitter, at Lori Siegel as well. So That's great. And I, the truth mm -hmm. is, I'm so conflicted. Like, I see the problems, but I also... Yeah. I mean, Instagram's amazing for allowing us this opportunity to do this and it's, you know, brings people together and shares information. So it's all very complicated. Yeah. I mean, but that is such, that is why we are at, as someone who's covered tech all these years, this is such a fascinating moment in time. Like we are at this pivotal point where like, who knows what's going to happen in the next five years, but it's going to be a wild ride. I really think it will be. So buckle up.
Um, Lori, so nice to do this. I hope we can do this again and, yes, and, and bring you in to explain some of this stuff because you really know your, your brief. Oh. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Great to be here. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye.